Welcome back, it's John from OGS. Today we're gonna to talk about classic car games. First game on the list, Crazy Taxi. That was an absolute classic game. Oh, best soundtrack ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You can choose your characters. I think there was probably only four or five characters. I always went the guy that looked like Johnny Bravo. Now the aim of the game was basically you wanted to create the most memorable journey for that particular passenger and you wanted to get there in a nick of time. With Crazy Taxi you could do amazing jumps, you could do all sorts of different tricks. This particular game was a staple of the arcade scene. Whenever I would go to Time Zone or whatever it was called back in the day, I'd always see Crazy Taxi and I'd be drawn to it because of just the sound, the visuals and the things that you could get done. Years later, I bought the game for my, not Dreamcast, I think it was Nintendo 64, and I had a lot of fun with that. You could do special missions where you had to jump as far as you could, but you press certain buttons and it would actually launch it up just a little bit higher so you could get that high score. In terms of gameplay of Crazy Taxi, there really wasn't too much to it. There was stop in the designated area where you pick up your passenger, get there as quick as possible, avoid cars, and with the physics of the game, they were all over the shop, but that's what made that game fun, because it was almost like comedic and cartoonish, the way that you could move the car around. You would run into other cars, there'd be no damage done to your car sort of thing, but uh, when you hit other cars, it would slow you down, your customer uh, in the back seat would say something funny, and then, you know, you just had to keep on going about your merry way. That's Crazy Taxi. The second game on my list, it's a classic. It's Carmageddon. I reckon in my lifetime, I have run over at least a thousand pedestrians, obviously in the virtual world. But that game was just, it, it had the sound effects. You run over somebody, every single person bloody did the uh, Willem scream. <laughs> Oh, it brings back memories. The aim of Carmageddon was basically a, a destruction derby. Um, you had missions to complete. Hey, the graphics weren't great, but you could definitely make out that you were the car. On the top left-hand side of the screen, you would have your driver. And basically, the aim of, game, aim of the game was to create as much mayhem as possible. Carmageddon basically was a precursor for Grand Theft Auto, in my opinion. You had terms such as wasting other players, collecting bonus points by completing little missions. And the whole thing really was entertaining. Again, those sound effects were just the absolute best in that particular game. Probably the thing I loved most about Carmageddon was the environment. Every single map was gritty. Okay, a little bit pixelated, but every single map just like was in an industrial wasteland or like it was a real dystopia. It reminds me now when I think back to like a Mad Max movie, Fury Road, where everything was just, you know, diabolical, you know, the cover art, everything. What an amazing game that was. Third on the list for classic car games, Arguably not really a car game, but more of a kart game. It's Mario Kart. You had levels that bring back memories, you know, a soundtrack, and all of your favorite characters that you've played on Nintendo throughout the years. And what was really dynamic about this particular game is that your character, you could collect items and then you could shoot them off or shoot them forwards or backwards and you could get other players and that would slow them down then you'd go ahead of them. Really, really interesting maps. Everything was really nice and colourful and yeah, just some really, really classic memories that I've got of that particular game. You're coming first, right? And you've still got one lap to go. That is a very dangerous strategy because you could be due to get what's called Mario Karted. That's when basically like all of the bombs, all of the weapons just hit you at once. It's like a mass effect. And then suddenly you're in last place, but you're still on the last lap. So you actually still have a chance to come first, believe it or not. The AI and the dynamics really led for some really interesting scenarios. And you're just edging people off the line 
or you were coming last, you know, and yeah, you've got like one more turn, and suddenly you get the best weapon, and then you Mario Kart somebody else. Oh, it's a ripper of a game. I'll tell you what, one of my all time favorite games, and this is definitely a classic car game. And you'll notice the pattern with all the, all the ones I really like, they involve destruction. My, one of my favorite games is Twisted Metal number two. I can still hear that iconic clown laugh when you fire up that game. Oh, every single character has its own personality, from Axel with the wheels on each side of his body and his arms outstretched and, and entwined with the machine, to Warthog with, uh, Warthog with the, um, the hammer. You've got Mr. Grime, or Mr. Grim rather. <laughs> I'm using my memories to think about all this sort of stuff. You know, Mr. Grimm with his motorcycle. But my favorite character of all was definitely Thumper. It was a 64 Chevy Impala. It had machine guns on the side. It's a light blue pastel color. And he was my favorite, favorite character of them all. The aim of the game with Twisted Metal, like a lot of these other games, was a partial demolition derby. But basically you got special weapons and you would attack other characters and you had to blow up everybody without getting yourself blown up. There were special maps, there were special tricks where you could blow things up in the map. Let's for, say for example the Paris map. You could actually blow up the Eiffel Tower and, and it would unlock new features and areas to go through. Twisted Metal is an iconic franchise, but I do believe Twisted Metal 2 is the one that really kicked it off. And who could forget Sweet Tooth and then Dark Tooth. Another really grimy game. And I loved it because, like I said, if you got to the end and you encountered Calypso, he would grant you that wish, the wish of the driver. But there's always a twist, you know? It's like the grass is always greener. It was almost like a life lesson. So right at the end, there would be cutscenes of your character wanting something from Calypso and then him going, ha ha ha, yes, you get that wish. I grant you that wish, but it wouldn't be quite exactly what you wanted, you know? So it was like, you know, just be careful what you wish for because when you achieve it, you might realize it's not what you actually wanted. So a classic game, and of course there's been a million of them. My, one of my favorite games is Twisted Metal number two. Now you gotta remember, this is my list. This is the games that I played when I was younger, you know, and thoroughly enjoyed. But of course we've got some honorable mentions. And the slopes here, they're perfect for a little boarding, man. I eat board here all the time. Unfortunately, it's out of season. So let's run some cars. The Autobahn is the place for super fast, super fly, car and car action.
You know the game I'm going to talk about, Need for Speed Underground 1 and 2. Wow, it was at the peak of the Fast and the Furious era, Sex Spec era. I really tapped in and they did their market research. That game was amazing. It was the best, in my opinion, when you were driving at night time, everything was lit up, you had the neons and the car selection was mint. You had all of the Japanese sex spec type cars. You could make them look sex spec. You could really make them look ricer if you wanted. But the level of customization, uh, customization was really second to none with that game. It introduced drifting to the masses. It introduced drag racing, shifting, making sure you got that right to get bonus points, linking up your drifts. And there was heaps of different missions. But some of the best Memories I've got are just cruising from checkpoint A to checkpoint B to complete a mission in the soundtrack. Again, the noises those cars made, you know, upshifting and downshifting, they would make a clicky sound with the gearbox, you know, and you're just cruising with your neons. Yeah, that was a fantastic game. And also there was plenty of missions to do. You could just cruise around and, and have some fun doing that, but also there was heaps of stuff to do heaps of things to collect and heaps of upgrades for your car. So, wow, probably the number one game is, uh, yeah, Need for Speed Underground, for sure. I think I had a cracked version on PC, you know, I can't remember, but uh, it's somewhere I've still got the game. I feel like playing it right now. I'm interested to know what uh, your favorite games were. Leave a comment below. If you like this sort of stuff, look below in the description box for all of our socials. See you next time.